My name is Russell Myers. Welcome to and unity for all. I'm awake at an odd time of day. Uh, I haven't got much sleep for various reasons. Uh, but, uh, okay, so this is going to be my longest video so far, most likely. Probably one of the longest videos I will do. So the tax bill passed. What does that mean? It's not good. It's very, 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 very not good. Uh, what signal does this send and to whom? Well, first of all, it sends a signal to the poor, the elderly, the weakest members of our society, the students, especially children of low-income families, that they just don't matter at all. It sends a signal to the rich that they are completely, and the corporations, that they are completely free to just rape this country, and there will be no consequence at all. It sends a signal. Some people were surprised that stocks took a tumble when this passed. That's not a surprise. This sent a signal to the debtors uh, and the creditors, excuse me, of this country, the largest banks, the international banks, other countries, treasury bondholders, it, it tells them clearly that the United States government does not take our debt seriously that our debts are not going to be paid off. What is this bill going to do to the national credit rating? It's gone. It, it, it's simply gone. What <laughs> uh, what credibility that we have had for our national debt on the international stage just no longer exists. Anybody that's been following me or friends with me on uh, Facebook for years knows I have been predicting for a very long time, for over a decade, that a crash is coming, that a new civil war is coming. This was a major, major step toward that. And I expect that to happen around the middle of 2018. What do I mean when I say a crash is coming? First of all, I said before, look at what happens when stocks go up. Does, is that a signal uh, that your finances have improved? No, no. Usually, your, when stocks go up, it's a lot more likely that you will receive a pink slip or a pay cut. If you're lucky enough to hold you to keep your job, your job, your pay is going to stay the same or it will actually be reduced. I 
guess I'll have to do a whole different video uh, on how stocks are uh, how stocks rise at and, and why they've been rising and rising uh, because of interest free loans to major corporations and financial institutions to prop up the stock market. The dollar is not based on anything. The value of the dollar is based on resources that we don't own. If you understand the petrodollar system, that is what lends the dollar value on the international stage. The dollar it has value because oil is, it has been for over 40 years. All oil traded in, on the world market has been traded in dollars. And this is the biggest thing right now that is going to cause the fall. China has established a new market where oil can be sold and traded on the world market in Chinese yuan. And who is China partners with? Russia, for one. Russia is now the world's largest producer of oil. Venezuela, who is pretty far up there. A lot of countries are signing on to trade oil in the Petro one, which displaces the petrodollar. Then we've got trade with other countries. There is virtually no major developed country that we trade with that we do not have a trade deficit with. We buy more from them than we sell to them. So, if the dollar is devalued, they can simply refuse to trade with us, or they can put extreme limits on it. The next issue coming up is equity debt. We've already seen malls, anchor stores, brick and mortar stores that are shutting down. When anchor stores and malls shut down, then it has an effect on major malls. And then it, that affects the smaller stores in that mall. If they're not drawing people in, they're not going to spend in that mall. So we're going to see a return of the 1970s and urban decay and if you remember the late 70s, early 80s, a lot of malls were failing at that time. And I remember it extremely well because I lived through it. And with those stores shutting down, you lose jobs. We have equity investors that have been driving up the value of property and, and hence driving up the cost of rent. They're going to go under. When they go under, if they're renting out property, if they own your house or apartment, 
uh, then you don't have a place to live. What happens then? There are fewer places to live, which drives up the cost of rent more. If you don't have a job, well, good luck to you finding a place to live. Little breaks in the recording here. I just take a pause here and there just to regather my thoughts. All right, so next up we've got major corporate online resellers. And okay, I'm not going to name names, but if you've been paying attention, one mega, mega corporation is looking for um, a new uh, second headquarters. And look at what cities are doing to try and draw them in, giving them major tax breaks. Well, okay, some people call, call this the cost of doing business. And but what effect does that have? To draw these companies in for huge headquarters, they have to build new roads, new electrical utility systems, and often entire substations, new sewage, water supplies, roads, everything. And quite often that also means, well, they're going to pull out the eminent domain card. And if you live where that corporation is going to build, well, your house is gone and you're not going to get much for it if you get anything at all. So, then they give these massive tax breaks. What do the tax breaks mean? That means that you are going to pay the taxes to pay for all of that infrastructure. If they actually buy houses, if you don't live where they want to build, you're, you're not off the hook because you're paying to buy the houses from the people that do live there, whose houses are being taken, on top of all the infrastructure. Then what do the corporations promise? Low-wage jobs. Low-wage jobs means low taxation. That means that your city Oh, yeah, they offer, oh, 10,000, 50,000 jobs, all at minimum wage. So what does that do for the economy of your city that you live in? Take a wild guess. I've seen this, too. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. When San Antonio drove out, yeah, uh, you know, major living wage jobs. San Antonio in the late 70s was a tech hub before there were tech hubs. There was a major company there called uh, Datapoint. And the city took steps which drove Datapoint out of the city, and when Data Point left, <laughs> they didn't abandon their employees. All the way down to the janitors, they picked up and moved out and took all of their employees with them, all of whom were making living wages. That whole area of town just crashed. 
it went from being a beautiful, nice area of town uh, with a country club and nightclubs everywhere. That was all gone. The nightclub, the country club just sat empty. Yeah, uh, you know, with a big golf course getting overgrown with weeds. You know, expect that. It, it's going to happen everywhere. Uh, oh, yeah. And for this one corporation that's, that I was talking about, one city is even telling this corporation that the corporation can collect income taxes and then the corporation can keep those income taxes. So the employer will be taxing the employees and they don't have to hand any of those taxes over to the city or state. So that won't be contributing to the health of the economy of the city where they're building. Instead, they are, the whole thing is just a massive burden. I'm not mentioning the name of the corporation because it doesn't matter. This is going to be a model that is used by other corporations. They, these things have been climbing for years and years. And now this is just the top of the heap. I'm telling you that that crash is coming and nobody is going to take America seriously as on our debt. The major international banks are not going to loan to us. Other countries are not going to loan to us. Bloomberg already stated that China is probably going to stop um, holding any U.S. Treasury notes anymore at all, but they're probably going to stop any foreign in the, uh, Treasury bond holdings. Uh, Saudi Arabia has been holding U.S. Treasury bonds continuously since the 1970s. That was part of the petrodollar system. But they have been doing so poorly for years now that they are probably going to sell off the remainder of their treasury bonds in the middle of 2018. That's one of the reasons I say the middle of 2018. Our debt with China is coming due, which is... 1.3, 1.4 trillion dollars. When these debts to other countries come due, those countries have the right to say, we will not accept dollars. We want physical gold. So I'm expecting Chinese military ships in a U.S. harbor that arrive to pick up the gold and sail off into the distance. This tax bill could not have come at a worse time in history. I've been expecting a crash that would exceed the 1929 crash. At this point, with this tax bill, I'm expecting a crash that could rival 
almost any economic crash in world history. Maybe I'm overstating it, but I don't think by much. The only thing that of note that we are exporting at this point is weapons. Weapons and warfare. Country after country is turning away from us. Look how many countries are buying weapons from uh, Russia now. So even our weapons are really not the top of the line and not the first choice. A lot of countries don't want weapons that the U.S. has any ability to control anymore because they don't trust us. And if they're not using those weapons up, then they don't need to keep restocking them. Europe is not at war. The only ones of note that we are selling weapons to that keep using them up is Saudi Arabia. And look at what they're trying to do. So, but we're selling those weapons at a loss. We give over $90 billion to other countries. And we hear about these big weapon sales, but it's always stated that, say, Saudi Arabia is going to buy $150 billion worth of weapons over 10 years. That's $15 billion a year while we're handing out 90. We're selling those weapons at a loss. Well, to keep building those weapons, what are we doing? We're borrowing more money, which adds debt on top of loss. This is a system that cannot continue, and if nobody's going to loan us money, then we can't even build those weapons to export. So, the weapons industry, the military industrial complex, is just going to crash. We will no longer be able to afford to wage our wars, which is what so much of our government and huge corporations have been relying on. When you got other countries that don't want to go to war, and we can't afford to wage our own, and that moment is going to happen. And it's going to happen soon. And I've been expecting us to start a world war, but wars cost money. If you don't have the money, you can't wage the war. So that's good news. Is there any good that can come out of this? Yes, in the long term. Definitely not in the short term. The one good that can come out of this, after very much suffering, is that the people that have been brainwashed into believing the trickled on theory of economics, that if you make the rich richer, that it's going to someday reach them, will finally be convinced that it's a lie. That's going to take time, though, because they're still believing it. The trickled-on theory of economics has been with us since Reagan, and it has been proven.
proven a lie. The goal here is to create a surf system, but they're not counting on the revolution that is going to happen. So, that's going to be a rough road ahead. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I do have a page on Facebook, uh, which offers a lot more information and I keep adding to it about the coming crash of the economy and all the indicators that are there. I will put that link below. Please hit like and subscribe. Please share this video with your friends, and uh, if you can, become a uh, patron on Patreon, and uh, I will talk to you probably next week. So, bye.